mean, the big announcement cast wise was the Grey Sisters. Mm -hmm. And um, they did say originally they were going to go with a triple goddess kind of play on them, um, which it's interesting to think about how they're going to do that when they did cast women that look around the same age range. Yeah. But um, I'm, I'm intrigued, you know, I, I want to mm -hmm. see it. Um, I also really love that they went with comedians um, because like the, the movie version of the Grey Sisters, I didn't hate them. Like, I felt like there was something about it that worked. They just didn't spend enough time with them. Mm -hmm. And so uh, this is kind of like, in my opinion, a better version of that. Not necessarily that the actresses are better, but in that, like, at least this has Rick behind it. And so it's going to be funny in the way it's supposed to be. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And the thing that was the bigger thing, I guess, besides the... Tra the teaser trailer that like somehow within like five days <laughs> they put together a trailer with the chariot race in it that made everybody really excited <laughs> about seeing the chariot race because i'm pretty sure that's the only thing that they've filmed so far um mm -hmm. just because how could they do anything else because it's only been five days um besides that the thing that i thought was like that they were telling us is that um dior and charlie are series regulars of this season mm -hmm. along with daniel and who plays um tyson and yeah. so that means that luke and dior are going to be around enough that they have like a series regular title on it and i told you and i made a video about it that when they said that luke was going to be a series regular i'm like i'm going to need to go to so much therapy <laughs> to have to see him more because and like the one thing that I took out of that was they were talking about how they went through a bunch of like training for to be on like horses because of the chariot races and stuff and that and they said that Charlie was included in that. And so I'm like, oh, that's interesting because it does kind of make sense for them to have Luke directly like attack camp during the chariot race. Mm -hmm. um, because he does have like this when you think about it like that we just obviously we just read the book but he does have like a whole pattern in that book of ambushing them mm -hmm. and some of the people that they haven't announced casting for yet is selena and so um it would set up really well like her whole thing of her being the mole or there being a mole at all because already just in the book version like he ambushes them by poisoning the tree when they don't realize that he did it. He ambushes them when they suddenly are on his ship and they don't know it. And then he surprises them at the end when he takes them when they get back with the golden fleece and that all of that stuff happens. And then almost also with like Thalia coming back. But like if you add in like him kind of physically showing up and like being at camp, it makes everything kind of more scary like because it would be a lot harder for them to leave camp and leave everyone there knowing that there's no protections and that luke and like we know because this is one of those things i think is funny that rick riordan forgot about his own story he forgot that he made his sword something that can make um portals this is our way out way out of what camp but they like remembered that and they put and they put that into you know the ending scene of the first season and so he could very easily just like portal himself back to camp when they're gone mm -hmm. and that there's nothing that any of them can do to stop him from doing that it just makes everything that happens to them when they're gone like more difficult because they they have no idea to know like what he's doing to any of them when they're gone and they just kind of have to hope that nothing too bad happens before they can get back and it just makes him a more scary and like menacing villain if he's actually showing up more and attacking them instead of seeing like things that he's sending. Mm -hmm. um, it just is scarier for it to actually see him. Yeah. And so I thought that was really interesting. I'm like, that does change things. And it does mean that we would see Charlie more terrorizing everybody. <laughs> Yeah, and like, I mean, we, we kind of predicted this when they, they announced Allison character, um, that like, maybe we're going to get a little bit more development of, mm -hmm. um, of what happens on the yacht, because like, 
we get one scene on it in the book you know like yeah. um we only get literally is it two chapters that he shows in because there's the chapter mm -hmm. where they're on the yacht and then there's the ending and so in between there's no luke so for yes. him to be a series regular means we are going to get that development of maybe how he manipulates other kids in camp or maybe um who exactly is on his side and how he's sending all of these things to camp so one thing that they said about him that i really like too is that they're not making him wear any like weird prosthetics or anything yeah. like that i love that that he's just going to be walking around as himself and they're going to add like whatever stuff to him with like cgi later that will just make it so much easier for him and every other person that interacts with him to just be able to act like normal instead of like i remember when star wars did the like the force awakens with the maz kanata character that um i forget the actress's name i can't remember her name but she's in um black panther and mm -hmm. when she played that role she had to walk around with like this crazy like contraption thing on her body all the time and it just made it i'm sure really hard to like act and like play that role the way that you would um yeah. so i'm glad that they're not making him do that and they're like no you should act how you're going to and we'll just add everything later on um that will definitely be like way better yeah yeah and um so daniel um i had watched the netflix movie i can't remember if i talked about it yet on the pod but i know mm -hmm. i talked to you about it mm -hmm. the reason why i'm not worried about this casting anymore with him being so older is because he really like people were right when they say he plays a good himbo so if you watch the half of us on or the half of it i think is the name of the movie on netflix Mm -hmm. um that's the movie that i would probably look to for his tyson-esque personality um it's basically he befriends an asian um first generation uh student who like she writes everybody's essays in school for them mm -hmm. and that's how she earns money for her dad and he, he asks he, her for help with writing a love note but it turns out that him and this girl have a crush on the same the same girl so the love note is going to a person that this this girl has a crush on herself <laughs> and so like all of the little hilarious moments of him not realizing like oh you like her too or you know him just trying to be a good friend to her and she's very closed off and like serious and stuff but he's just like trying to charm her there's a <laughs> point where he realizes that she has all of their like their unpaid bills in her bag waiting to send off and he goes over to her house and makes food with her dad like it's really cute and so i know he's gonna be good at tyson because he can play sweet and a bit ditzy very well mm -hmm. and yeah like you said that because when i think of cgi nightmares i i think of twilight the most and the most out of pocket like one is that behind the scenes footage of bella like yeah. <laughs> wolf um what's his face i can't i can't even wolf jacob yeah <laughs> and i can't imagine trying to interact with somebody when they have like a cgi mask on or like a big dot on their face that they're gonna later computerize um <laughs> yeah so it is a good thing um let's see and then with dior being a season regular too I think we didn't talk about Dior as much in that. Um, we talked a little bit more about her relationship with Percy and how we wanted to see that get felt. So giving Dior more of a role and having Clarice um, uh, like actually be, I don't know, maybe they'll have the part on the USS Birmingham be longer or something like that. Or maybe we'll get more check-ins with what she's doing on the Birmingham, even yeah. separate from the kids. Um, One thing I think they thought of too is they could add in scenes with her and Grover mm -hmm. um, because she does get to the island before Percy and Annabeth do, like a while before they get there. And so if they wanted to add in scenes with Aryan and add more scenes with her, it would be very easy. And they were like, I can't remember any scenes at all between those two characters. So it would be really cool if they did do that, if they did add in scenes between the two of them because that's definitely something that we've never seen before 
And we also, because Allison is a brand new character, she could have interactions going on with her. Mm-hmm. And we don't even know what those would be because she's someone that they made up for the show. Um, but there's just a lot of stuff that they could do with her. And it just, I love the idea of them because she does have like really bug, big stuff that happens in later seasons that you mm-hmm. kind of do need to like set her up more as a character in like a show like this instead of like a book. It's easier for her to be kind of in the background. But with a show like this, you don't have to have every scene be from um, Percy's perspective anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, it would almost be one part I always wonder about too with Clarice is does she ever find out that Luke used her as as like her, as like his scapegoat during like the first quest? And oh, I would love for her to find out. I want her to find out and for her to like punch him like right in the head and just be like, fuck you, bro. Like, because she is one that doesn't like Luke after that happens. She just wants to go out and like find him and stuff because that's very Clarice of her. But um, so I just imagine things like that happening of her just being like, can I just like punch you in the head just like one time for making these kids believe that I would ever do what you did? Yeah. No. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, uh, Becky Riordan, she posted this article that she thought, she said it was like in line with the kind of stuff that's happening with, that's going to happen with Luke in season two. And I thought it was interesting. And of course I had like lots of like thoughts about it. <laughs> um, but it was basically an article where they were talking about the stuff that happens between him and Hermes, that mm-hmm. the stuff that you, I'll like try to be vague about it because I know that you don't remember it, all of that stuff completely. But it was basically the idea that like Hermes is, knows about like kind of what Luke is supposed to do in the last book. And so he stays away from him because it's like too hard for him to be around him and not want to like change his like fate when he knows that he's supposed to do this thing and it's too important of a thing for Luke to do for him to like want to change what it would be. Um, And they're basically like that whole line that Hermes says in the book of like, oh, your parents could be doing things that you don't even know about in the background, that whole thing. Um, and of course, when I read that, I was like, that still makes you an outrageous asshole. Just by the way, because like the first thing, of course, just in my life that I think of is um, with my sister and my niece, that it would be much easier for me and like my mental health if I just didn't see my niece very much when she was growing up. It would be way easier for me. Mm-hmm. It's going to be very hard for me to see her be the ages that I was when I was being horribly abused. And it's going to happen pretty soon. Like it's not a very long time before things like that will have started happening. And so it would be much easier for me to be like, this is too hard for me. I'm just not gonna know my niece. I'm just gonna like not see her very much because it's too hard for me to like deal with this stuff. And then also if things start going bad between her and my sister, it would be really hard for me to see that and to have to watch that and be limited about what I could do and things like that, that would be very difficult for me. But like, to be honest, if I did that, I would be a horrible person. And if I did that, if I stayed away from her just for my own benefit and left her alone in a horrible situation because of my own shit, she Mm -hmm. would absolutely be completely validated in hating me. Like she should hate me. I would have absolutely no leg to stand on to be like, yeah, I knew that you might be in pain, but I just ignored you that whole time because it was harder for me. Like that is ridiculous. <laughs> and so that's how I see that environment is like, yeah, okay, maybe Hermes did like know that that would happen and he did stay away from Luke, but also you're his dad. You should get over your own bullshit and be around your kid anyway, even if it is hard for you because you're the adult and they're the kid. And that's the literal bare minimum of how those relationships are supposed to work. You yeah. deal with your emotions later, but you be there for a child that doesn't know any better. Like Luke doesn't know any better. Like if Luke, Luke doesn't know why you're not around, if he, he doesn't know that you have like some weird moral thing that you're doing that you're not bothering to tell anybody about, why would he know that? He would just hate you. <laughs> and so I thought that was interesting because 
they might try to make me like Hermes, but that will never, ever happen. <laughs> Like, we may like Lynn Manuel Miranda, but <laughs> sorry, sorry, Lynn. Like you're gonna do, you're gonna try, but if that's like the route they're gonna go, I'm, I, I think they'll keep it more like gray than anything else. Um, they're still praying for a Talia announcement. Like we, we've seen two different speculations on who it could be. There's a new one that's a little bit more recent, and um, I'm just, I'm ready to learn who it's gonna be because. I'm hoping that she is not necessarily a regular, but regular enough in this season that we do get that character building of Talia, um, Talia, Annabeth, and Luke a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and um, the next thing that people are probably going to f- f- focus on for now when it comes to announcements is Percy's birthday, which is yeah. August 18th. They usually announce. They announced something or other on his birthday first when they were doing season one. Um, they usually do something on his birthday every year. And so if they are going to announce that stuff, they would be, they would probably still be on the first two epi- um, episodes when they're doing that. Um, but mm-hmm. so I always go back and forth of like who they're going, when they're going to announce Thalia because she probably wouldn't be involved until later on anyway. Um, we just, want to know because we're impatient people. <laughs> but there are a bunch of other people that could be in those episodes that they could announce, like Charlie um, and Selena and mm-hmm. other people like that, like Tantalus, if they, if they have a Tantalus at camp this time. It would make sense that they would have characters like Charlie and Selena and stuff at showing what's going on at camp while they're away to show like the effects of what Luke is doing and Selena being the mole and all that kind of stuff because they don't need to have everything be from Percy's perspective. And so those people could also be cast and everyone would have so many feelings <laughs> about Selena and Charlotte. There's an abundance of so many about those two characters alone. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I could see them, if, even if they don't announce Thalia for a little bit longer still, I could see them announcing those people and everybody crying about them. <laughs> <laughs> maybe we'll get a short like teaser video of the kids in their chariots who knows like 